Are you struggling to beat match, missing your cue points, or are you just not feeling the music? This could be your problem. I'm going to show you three quick drills you can practice on the decks every day that make your ears, hands, and brain work together and nail one of the most important DJ skills, timing. You can grab all the sounds used in the description. Ask anyone to do an impression of a DJ and they'll do this. What they're imitating is a baby scratch. You just move the platter or jog wheel backwards and forwards in a rhythmic motion. It's also one of the ways DJs use to queue up tracks on vinyl. The baby scratch is the first way we can connect our deck control to our internal metronome. The first thing to do is make sure your controller is in vinyl mode. Some controllers will have a dedicated button for this, and others are usually in it by default, but if not you can easily add it via MIDI mapping. If you're using Record Box, I've got a link in the description that will help you set that up. First of all let's load the breakbeat loop to deck 1. Use the jog to find the first beat. What we want to do is press down on the jog and rock it back and forth in time with the beat. Load the same breakbeat loop to the other deck. And set a loop. Let's start the loop playing. Hold down the jog on deck 1 and press play. This means it will carry on playing once you release. To begin with, just rock back and forth over the beat, keeping time. The next stage is to try and release the jog when the loop starts repeating. One thing you can use to help here is to count this out as 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and drop. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and drop. Now if you need a little extra help with phrasing, I've created a free guide that you can grab in the description. To make this exercise harder, try it at faster BPMs, and make sure to practice on both sides of the deck. This means you can use this technique no matter which way you're mixing, and your arm won't end up looking like you've been watching too much pub. You can also try moving the jog in different rhythmic patterns along with the music. For instance, try doing a tear scratch. This is where you move the platter forwards and then back twice, or forwards twice and once back. This creates a bit of a triplet effect. I'd been feeling stagnant in my DJing for a long time. There was one key mental shift I made that I think really took me out of that rut. That was to stop thinking my decks as gear and start thinking of them as instruments. But when I did, it unlocked so many more DJing possibilities. I've only been learning to scratch for a few months, so I'm far from what you would call good. But in that time, it's massively improved my sense of timing. If you want some really great scratching tutorials, I recommend this guy DJ Liftoff. I'll pop a link to his channel in the description. But today, I want to show you one drill I learned from Scratch Bastard. And this was so good for helping me practice rhythm and patterns. We're going to do a Poundland version of a Transformer scratch. The Transformer is a scratch where you cut the sound in and out using the crossfader. It's called a transformer because it sounds a bit like Optimus Prime doing a dump. Now normally you would do this scratch while moving the jog at the same time, but for this we're just going to focus on the rhythm of the crossfader. To begin with, load up your sample. I'm going to use a sine wave which you can grab in the downloads. If you need to, make sure the left side of the crossfader is assigned to the first deck. And make sure your crossfader curve is set to sharp in the preferences so the sound cuts in nice and fast. To do that, go to the cog, Go to controller, mixer, and change the crossfader curve so it points all the way to the right. Now load one of the drum loops to the other deck, and set a loop. Move the crossfader all the way to the right. Start playing your sine tone on the other deck. I recommend turning the volume down a bit. Now you shouldn't be able to hear anything until we move the crossfader over. Push the fader into your thumb with your middle finger and bounce it back again. Start simple by just tapping four times on each loop. Then try missing out some beats by keeping the fader closed. Then play around with keeping the fader open for longer to create different patterns. As you get more confident, try gradually increasing the BPM of the drum loop. See if you can keep the pattern going as you get faster.
there's a really great free app called Table Beats, which has got hundreds of drum loops that you can practice these drills with. And it even has a feature to gradually increase the BPM to make it more challenging. Finger drumming is a technique where you use the performance pads to tap your own rhythms along with the music. It's also a brilliant and fun way to practice your timing. Once you get good at this, it's easy to transfer the skills over to timing your cues. But first things first, we need to turn off cheat mode. Open up Rekordbox and click the sampler mode icon at the top. Find the little cue and turn it off. This disables quantize mode, which locks the sampler to the grid. Also disable BPM sync. On your decks, get into sampler mode by pressing the button above the performance pads. Drag the samples from the download in this order to the top three pads. Now load the drum loop onto the other deck and set an eight bar loop. The goal is pretty simple. We're gonna play along to the loop using the pads as our drums. First time around the loop, we're just gonna do the kick on every beat. Now, as well as the kick, add a snare on every second and fourth beat. And finally, we're gonna add a crash at the end of each phrase. Now, let's mix it up and do it with a drum and bass beat. We just need the kick and the snare for this one. One tip here is to not just poke the buttons. Try and get your fingers in a bit of a rhythm. This is a less jerky way of doing it and I found it helps you keep time better. But there's an even faster way to get better at timing. It's one of the free fundamentals in learning to land your drops. Watch this video next where I show you one of the most important skills most DJs don't practice.